Hey everybody, we are just fixing to get going here and sure are glad that you're all with us. Um, my name is Jill Dunkel. I am with Stock Horse of Texas and um, we are really excited to have a great evening planned this evening. I want to uh, do a few introductions and tell you about the ladies. Well, Mark, how are you over there? I'm <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? Jill is Jill's introducing us. Hi there, Barb. Hi. So we'll make a few quick introductions here. And um, first of all, we have Barbara Schulte. Uh, you guys can probably see her while she's waving at us while Shannon. Everybody's logging in here. We'll give them a couple minutes here to get everybody logged in and then we'll get started. Go I'm ahead. Go ahead, Jill. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. So um, anyway, we, uh, we wanna introduce Barbara Schulte first. She um, uh, comes to us from Brenham. She's a part of the National Cowgirl Hall of Fame. She's been named a National Female Equestrian of the Year. She's in the NCAA Hall of Fame. Um, she uh, has many, many accolades, but she is excellent at- Well, Barb, why don't you kick us off here? Battle. Let us know a little bit about what we're doing here and then I'll switch to you and I talking. Jill's on the line, but she'll be sending us messages by chat. Shannon, can you hear me? I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep going while Shannon uh, uncovers her technical difficulties real quick. Yeah. So anyway, we're really excited to have Barbara. And then um, I also wanna introduce Shannon Piggott. Shannon is from Fredericksburg and is a trainer um, specializing in stock horse events and VRH events and also some cutting. And Shannon has a really neat um, business helping people uh, find good connections with their horses and learning tips at shows and things like that. So two great speakers that we have uh, for you this evening. These ladies came together a few years ago and developed something called Club Cowgirl. It is a, a group of ladies who, who ride together, they learn together, they compete together, and just have a really special time, um, a few events that they get together uh, just for them. And so this is kind of a branch off of their organization with the Club Cowgirl and a free thing that we wanted to offer to everybody tonight. So we're we appreciate everybody logging on. Um, Shannon and Barbara, we'll let you guys take it away. Okay. Hello, everybody. We're so excited to be here. We're so grateful to Stock Force of Texas. Um, I got to check in with Shannon. Shannon, can you hear us? Hmm. Okay. I guess I'll be doing it. <laughs> she still can't hear us, can she? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Shannon, can you hear us? So I don't think they're going to send us to Hollywood to <laughs> movies very, anytime soon. But um, anyway, let, let me see if I can help Shannon here. You guys, please bear with us because may, no, she's not muted. So I don't know what's going on. So anyway, we're, we're delighted that you're here. And um I love Stock Force of Texas. I love everything about it. And I'm honored that we get to do this. And Jill, thank you for such a lovely introduction. And while Shannon <laughs> is figuring out how she can hear us, um, and usually or often I have controls or some controls, but I've lost control of the situation here. So um, we'll see. She's the techie one of the group. Anyway, Shannon? No. So the first thing that I want to tell everyone is that this, uh, this cow watching challenge that we're going to do this evening, the purpose of it is for you, no matter what level of experience, I always think, I don't think of it so much as skill, but I think of it as a level of experience that you have with cattle, 
whether you're just starting out or, or, or whether you've been cutting for a long time, what we're going to introduce you tonight is a system of watching cattle that a lot of uh, herd work and cutting horse people use to um, read cattle and fresh cattle herd work and cutting fossils. And so the, what we want to share and tell you is just to, to show you how we determine how, how, how we describe cattle, their physical characteristics, how we um, predict their behavior. And what I can tell you is even if you don't cut or do herd work, if you practice these skills that we're going to teach you, that you will learn to read cattle. And I know that for, for everyone, no matter what cow class you're in, that's one of the biggest challenges and complaints is I never get to work cattle. And I know that that exists um, across the board. It doesn't matter the discipline, but while this particular challenge and exercise we're going to share with you doesn't give you direct experience with cattle. What it will do is give you a system to be able to understand, to be able to describe cattle. So when you hear the jargon going on about, you know, like the, the round pole, black baldy or black mott cow, if you start to hear some of that kind of jargon, as well as how they act. So if you're in a boxing class and the cow just kind of comes running out, maybe you'll be able to read a little bit of, um, of, of their behavior and bubble and that sort of thing. You so, know, hi Shannon, I, are you I, with I, us? Yes, I am with, I am. And what you just said, you know what? I remember <laughs> when I first really started cutting and working cattle, I was like, how are you gonna get good at this game? If you don't have cattle to work, if you don't have cattle to interact with, but this, what we're going to share with everybody tonight, I think is so helpful when you don't have 40 or 50 head of cows at your place to work. And you might only go see your coach or your trainer once every couple of weeks. This is a great system for learning cattle. Okay. Okay, everyone. Sorry for our technical difficulties. We've done several of these before and never had so many troubles. So well, let me just started. get started while, while Barb jumps right in. Yeah, we've done a lot of these it, tonight. The, the Zoom gods, they must be doing all kinds of things tonight. So let me just give you a little insight into what this cattle watching challenge is about. If we really just boil things down in, in terms of watching cattle, there are just really three things that we need to be able to do. And by the way, this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you box, if you do fence work where you're working an individual cow, or if you're working in a herd, reading cattle is reading cattle. But there are three things, and these are three things you should write down here. One, we want to be able um, to help you earn as many points as possible through a game we're going to teach you to specifically identify specific cattle and identify sometimes a herd, what makes up a herd, how a herd's energy might be um, perceived in a, in, a, um, um, in a cutting situation, your ability to describe cattle. We're gonna teach you a little bit about how to describe those cows in a way that they can be memorable. And then the most important thing is really how to predict the behavior of cattle. And we're gonna make it really simple because we're going to set it up as a goal for you to identify 10 cows. 
And guys, we have a great opportunity, every single Stock Horse of Texas show, to go and watch a bunch of cattle. Usually the cuttings are on Friday night. And in those Friday evenings, you might be able to watch 50 to 100 head of cattle come in the pen and out of the pen. And that's a great way for you to learn. So this cattle watching challenge is a game. And it is a game that you will use to develop your skills in reading cattle. Hey, Shannon. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, they're back. Can you see me? I can't see you, but I can hear you. Okay. All righty. It's no problem. My camera's on. I'm not really sure why it's not working, but no problem. I just wanted to, wondered if you could, could, you could see me or hear me. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Keep going. Sorry. So I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a barbism. Anyone who has, has done any work with Barb, one of her favorite sayings, and you, maybe I should just ask you to type in the chat boxes. No problem. It's no problem. So our, our technical challenges here tonight are no problem. Oh, so, and wait, hold on. I just yeah. want to say this, Shannon. It's not only no problem, but it's, I love this. I <laughs> love when things go haywire. I love this. Okay, sorry. Keep going. Yeah. So you all should have received the handout um, of a piece of paper that has four boxes um, to the, it, it identical to the image that you see on your screen. And we're going to explain how this works. But in this cattle working challenge, you are going to identify 10 cows and you'll use this sheet of paper. So you might want to have this handy and out as we go through the discussion so you can learn how to quickly use this form. You know, Barb was one of the big pioneers in the space of, of cutting. She was one of the first really competitors to start riding cattle down. Now, Barb, how were you received when you, they saw you out there with your notepad? They would tease me so badly. They would. They go, oh, you have to ride cattle down. We don't have to ride cattle down. But now if you go to Will Rogers Coliseum or you go to really to any cutting, weekend cutting or any place, everyone is riding cattle down. Because when you have a big herd of cattle and if you work at the end of the herd, you really have to remember and anyway, it's important to me to write them down. So we just decided to divide or to give you one system that you can use. And then, of course, we all develop our own over time. Right. You know, I think of, of, of reading cattle, kind of like I, I feel like if I go to, I meet a new group of friends or I go to a party where I don't know anybody. And, and the first thing is, you know, I'm trying to remember everybody's name and I, I want to get to know them. So, you know, I'm assessing, you know, who is the person? How might I describe them to someone else? Um, perhaps uh, there's a name that I can remember. And then the last part of that is developing someone's character. Now, I'm not implying that you take this form to your next party and start describing people by their clothes or their earrings. But this sheet of paper that you have in your download, you'll just fold this along the purple lines and it will give you four areas to write. And so Barb, for, for the folks that are thinking about reading cattle and, and wanna participate in this challenge, what might be the first thing that they would do with a herd? <laughs> Well, let's go to the next slide. There you go. Okay, so basically reading cattle uh, and, and specifically in watching cattle, that is that there are two parameters. One is to describe them physically because you want to be able to tell one cow from the next. So if you say a solid black cow like this, you know, uh, to, to the left of the screen, this solid black cow over here, um, you want to be able to tell that solid black cow from this solid black cow. But if this was the only solid black cow in the herd, you wouldn't have to do very many descriptions of it. You just say the solid black cow. So when cattle first come in, the thing to do is to get an impression of the assortment of colors 
that are in the herd so that you know, I always think of it as how hard I have to work for a certain color. So for example, this is a pretty wide variety of colors of cattle. Um, you know, we have probably the most number of black cattle. I haven't like counted them. And we have a lot of a number of solid black cattle. So that's going to be the group of cattle that we're going to have to find other markings. But then we have um, red cattle. And within that, uh, we'll talk about distinctions of color. And then we have uh, wider, white to gray cattle. And then we have more yellow cattle. So while a herd of cattle comes in, and it seems daunting that there's so many, if you just, as a first step, you know, step back and just think, okay, we have 10 solid blacks, we have three white cows or three gray cows, that's going to um, be really easy to tell those cattle apart. And so that's the very first thing that we do. Okay, Shanna, next slide. You know, one other thing I wanted to add there is, you know, sometimes I feel like when a herd comes in the pen, other than their kind of those first impressions, there's an ener there's an energy to some herds too. Mm -hmm. you Absolutely. That? Yes. That's another whole dimension about about reading them. But yes, they come in, they might be steers, they might be heifers, they might feel wild, they might not. But as a first thing, just for the wa watching cattle, you get a feel of their energy and then and then their um, colors. And then Barb, what uh, on average, how many cows might there be per competitor? Well, it depends on the show. Um, and on weekend shows, there's usually two to two and a half cattle per competitor. When you go to Will Rogers, to this on the NCHA, the National Cutting Horse Association competitions, in the go rounds, there are four, which is wonderful for the person who works last. And then in the finals, there, there's usually five cattle per competitor. Okay. That is, that's wonderful. Can you go on to the... Um... Um, to the second point that you were going to talk about today um, in terms of what a herd might look like, whether there'd be similar colors or they yeah. might be similar, but might not be similar. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes what happens is that you'll have a herd that comes in and they look like they're almost all the same color. Like they're basically variations of white, variations of yellow, variations of red, and they just look like a sea of the same color. And that gets more challenging, but when you look a little more closely um, and with time, and, and one point I'd like to make is for those of you who really love cattle sports, and you really want to learn to read cattle and hone your skills, watching cattle is really something that you have to do on your own or with a friend because a lot of people don't put in the effort, but it makes a huge difference um, in terms of accelerating your skills. There's a little sidebar there, but about the colors, but let's just say, for example, if I looked at this particular, oh, here we go. Here's a great example of a, of a group. So if I was looking at these cattle, I think, man, the black cattle, even though they're solid blacks are going to be the easiest to tell, but the rest of these suckers are like, how am I going to tell them apart? But when you look a little closer, basically you have if, if I was looking at these, I think of them in terms of gray. So like this cow, this cow in the front, um, it is, you know, a dark gray as opposed to this gray cow. And they both have horns, but we'll talk about that in a minute. This gray cow is, has a little bit darker neck and a lighter body. Um, there's a gray cow in the back here. And then I talk about these whiter cows. Oops, Shannon. These, these wider cows um, 
So look at this little white cow right here has dark ears and a dark nose. Isn't that cute little cow? Be a cute little rug. That's not a very good comment. Anyway, and then these other white cattle. And here's another gray cow with a white line down its back. So once you start to really look a little closer, you can group them into the subsets. So we don't have to get way into this, but I just wanted to say that um, as you practice this, what might seem a little daunting in the beginning will really become easier and easier. And by the way, as we go through this tonight, just kind of let, if you're just starting, just kind of let this information wash over you. If you've had more experience, um, hopefully you'll we'll dig a little bit deeper. But to me, this would be yellows, you know, and even within the yellow, look at this little yellow paint cow right here. There's yellows and there's, there's oranges and reds and there's whites and there's grays and there's blacks. And so when you start breaking them into those subsets, it really is, um, it becomes quite apparent. And even with the whites, look at this white cow it has a black nose as opposed to, um, let's see, another white cow. I'm not sure what color that one is right there in the front. Anyway, there, there you go. Just a comment about the colors. You know, so and I think when you see a herd like this, you know, if, if you're on your horse and this herd comes in, and by the way, sometimes the same pressure is when that cow comes it back out of the back fence. If you're doing fence work, it, that cow rushes out and you're like, oh my gosh, um, I'm not so sure about this cow. But the more that you'll just settle and open yourself up to, trying to just get a sense of the cow or cows and and like you said just let it kind of wash information wash over you let the cow kind of wash over you too pretty soon you start looking at one and you're like oh he's kind of soft-eyed and oh i'm not sure about that one and and over time then um over time as you're spending time with that herd you will start to really get a sense of the personality of the cows and I think it's kind of fun sometimes, Barb, you know, especially if I'm feeling a little nervous, which is sometimes, I, pretty often, that I think about these cows and I start to want to remember them. I come up with the funniest little things, like I named them. And I know you've told me that you named them uh, as well. The funnier the name, really, the better. I don't know about your artwork here, Shannon. I would just <laughs> like to say that I did not create these images. I so. think in the chat box, we should ask them to name the cow on the farthest right of the screen. <laughs> I'm not even sure if, I'm not even sure if anyone can tell what that face <laughs> is, Shannon. <laughs> well, we're going to call it a little rat cow. How about that? So, you know, if you see a cow that's kind of, kind of like, you're not really sure about it, because maybe he's got a little rat face like this guy to the right, you might call him right face, is he's wooly, you might come up, oh, you know, the wooly paint, or, you know, you can use Elsie, which, you know, be kind of a Jersey type cow. Oh, I see one, here's a great comment, screaming mouse cookies and cream. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay, it is, uh, naming them really helps you remember them, like cattle with, uh, their four tops sticking up. We used to call those Lyle Lovett cattle. The funnier the name, the better. The only thing is you have to make sure your helpers know the name. Otherwise, if you walk in, they go, I'd like to cut Lyle Lovett. They're not going to be too sure who Lyle Lovett is. Okay, so when, when people talk about descriptions of cattle, remember we, we introduced this by saying there's how you describe them physically, and then how you predict their behavior, what you think they're gonna do when they're separated in a herd work or when they run into the arena, which you don't have as much information when in boxing when they're just let into the arena as you do when you study them in herd work, which is what's so awesome about that opportunity to learn to read cattle. But the way people talk about cattle is they most often they'll say the 
little or big, perhaps red cow, solid red, which refers to their face most of the time. I mean, you can be obviously a paint body, but a lot of times after they talk about their color, they'll talk about their face, like the black mott here on the left side, or they'll say the horned gray mott, the horned light gray mott, or the spiky horned light gray mott, as opposed to this white cow on the right, which I can't see horns there, kind of has a fluffy um, swirl in its head, um, or the, the yellow devil horn cow with the white eyebrows. People um, most often go color, a lot of times breed like, you know, the black brangus mott, or just the black mott. Mott means multicolors on their face. Um, so you have things in their face like, you know, the, the colors, the horn shape, the forehead swirls, the eyebrows. We have to see, we have just, we only have four cattle here and we have almost all of these characteristics. Fuzzy top would be this gray mott right here has the fuzzy square top. Um, round top would be this black mott right here. Blinders or teardrops. Um, we don't have blinders. Blinders usually, um, sorry you guys can't see me because I'm going through gyrations here, but blinders um, usually are colors around the eyes that have that extend from the jaw to go like a blinder like a, on a buggy horse as opposed to to a teardrop, which like this gray mott would have a little teardrop of color right here. Um, and really the sky is the limit. Like look at this cow it has really kind of a runny, dirty eye on the, on the far right. So um, ears, the length of ears, like this is a, um, a brahma cow, with, this black cow with, has brahma blood with the big ears. Um, so going to their head, that their color, their breed in their head um, is often the sequence. Okay, next. Okay, and then people often, now this is not set in stone, but people often then go to whatever else is really a strong characteristic, really stands out like, color variations, weight, like this little yellow cow would be the, the yellow or the gold necked, not, okay, and remember, just sorry, I'm digressing. There is no set in stone, like there's no archive of how you're gonna describe this yellow cow. It's just how you describe it and your helpers understand or when you're doing this, this game that we're talking about, how you describe it. But I would call this yellow cow the gold necked, yellow body, fat, curly, manure wither, mule nose. Mule nose means white nose. Um, so, there you go. We start out with the with the you know gold neck. You know, as a solid color cow, and um, so just whatever stands out: color, weight, hair coat, manure stains, tail hair. Look at this. The, our specimen here um, has a spiky tail, whereas look at this black baldy right here has a really smooth tail. And by the way, I can't tell for sure this black baldy, if those are blunt, you know, I can't, it's not more enough to the side, but that's kind of the shape of a blinder, that black that goes around, but I can't tell if it's under the eye or over the eye. And sometimes when you have a lot of black baldies in one group, like look right here, we have one, 
two, three, four, baldy, meaning white face, not motley face. Sometimes they can be challenging to tell apart. So you might say left blinder, right ring, and you would write that down. This black baldy um, right here on the very forefront here, as this is called the dewlap, so that lots of uh, descriptors here. Sometimes um, you'll, you'll hear the term hair for horns. Look at this, see this little, the hair sticks out right here where the horns would be like kind of almost like a handlebar mustache but on the top of the head. So um, anyway, I just wanted to comment that the sky is really the limit as far as how you describe them. And by the way, any time that look at the, in the back in the uh, background here is this Brendel kind of a darkish red brown Brendel. Brendel means tiger stripe. Tiger stripes can be any color. It's that kind of mottled color throughout. And so this would be a tiger stripe horned, mott. Okay, remember I was talking about color, face. We did mott and horns. So it just takes you right to those facial characteristics. You know, Barb, um, the, I love the description of the yellow one and, uh, and especially our brindle mott with the horns. Um, I love those description. And I'm thinking that you know, some, some folks might wonder, well, why do we want to describe these cattle? Why do we want to write down their description? And, and what I would say to those uh, folks is that the more that we can identify a cow, especially if you're cutting, when you go to cut, you want to try to cut what we call a fresh cow. Not, that's one criteria. A fresh cow, meaning a cow that has not already been worked. That's, that's one thing. And then the second thing is, assuming that there are 10 fresh cows that you know have not been worked, you want to cut the best behaving cow for you and your horse out of those 10. Well, if we don't try to identify the good cows that we want to cut, and sometimes the cows that we don't want to cut, if we don't write them down, they're very hard to remember. So as as Barb was talking about this yellow cow, the more she talked about the cow, the more I was like, oh, I remember him. Oh yeah, I could remember him. If he walked to the back of the herd and he came back up, I'd still remember him. And I would form an impression of him. And that impression would be, is this a cow that my horse and I can handle that I think I can show my horse good with? Or is it a cow that maybe I, I'm not gonna be able to show well? And so if you're wondering what was the purpose for describing cattle, identifying them and communicating them to other people, that's the primary reason in, in my viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shannon, I think the other, yes, I absolutely agree. And I also think that, you know, so many people, it's so true that I understand that you all don't have a lot of opportunity to be around a lot of cattle and hear the, the jargon and the breeds. I mean, some of you perhaps do and some of you don't. And when you describe cattle and somebody says, you know, like this cow in the back here, this little fat Charlay, you know, Charlays are, you know, are the, mostly the white grayish cattle and it's rare for any of these to be purebred but that you get to be more and more savvy about the lingo of cattle you know that's part of the um just the learning and that again kind of washes over you over time and for example these brendel cows are always a combination of a Hereford cow or somewhere along the line, a Hereford cow and a Brahma. So that they can tend to be wilder. So you just begin to learn more and more 
of the nuances of what's happening. Okay. Yes. Okay. So considering that what we're hoping that you will do through this tool is to exercise and practice your ability to predict the behavior of cattle. Now, first we've got to identify the cattle and describe them, but the ultimate is to be able to try to predict. If you ever watch the NCHA cutting and uh, Will Rogers, you'll see many of the trainers behind the herd and they're always with their help writing down, okay, here's a great cow. I think this is gonna be a good cow. Watch how he acted with the horse in front of him. And that is an attempt to predict that because you want to be able to cut and work the best cow for you and your horse. And so what, what Barb and I feel is that one great way to learn more about cows and to practice predicting behavior is to rank a cow. And in this case, we're going to do 10 cows as part of this challenge by three criteria. One will be what you consider to be a top pick, like you've watched the cow and we're gonna talk about what, what constitutes a top pick in a second, but something that you feel like, I really like that cow, I think I could work that cow. Or you might have a cow that you say, no way, this isn't a cow that I, <laughs> that I remotely want to work. <laughs> Even if it's the last cow standing, I'd rather not cut it. Or- Come on, Shannon, have a little courage. Oh, well, shoot, they come out that I, I won't lie. Sometimes they get a little scary. You've got to reach down deep and grab that courage and, and keep showing. Or there's a cow that you see that you think might have a little potential, but you're not really sure. And we'd call those the maybe cows. So we want you to start thinking in terms of top pick, no way pick, and maybe pick. And sometimes these can change throughout a herd. So what, what we thought would be helpful is if we explain what we mean by top pick, no way, and maybe. Do you want to add anything to that, Barb? Yeah, I do. Um, and I know we might touch on this, but we're going to, the game that we described here, we're going to, um, most of your choices are going to be during the settling because you can watch the cattle and we're going to go through that here in a moment. But there's usually on, the, it's kind of a little bit like a bell curve with most herds. There's a few cattle that are awful and there are a few cattle that would appear to be angels. And then the rest of them are somewhere in the bell curve and it's by watching how they react to a horse. And those maybe cows are the, really the key to learn to me to, well, reading all of them is the key. But as you study the cattle that are not so obviously good or horrible, those are the cattle that will really help you learn to read cattle. But I think we're ready to go on because we're going to show examples of that. Yeah, and, and uh, to take what you just said one step farther, sometimes the maybe cattle, the, the one that's not really obvious, could be a cow that doesn't get cut. So if you're cutting, the really top picks, the ones that are obvious good cows, they might already be worked by the time that you go to the herd. And therefore, um, studying those maybe cows will not only hone your skills, but they really will help you um, because that might be a cow that you actually cut. Mm -hmm. So, and I, Shannon, I just want to interject something here yeah. real quick. And I think too, for people who don't cut, because I'm sure that there's quite a few people who are going to be watching this who just do boxing. I, I think that, um, you can that this information that you're going to that you're getting applies to one cow. I mean, it does apply to a single cow. It's just that we're studying a single a single cattle in a herd. And when cattle come out in boxing, they're sometimes they're a little startled, so they might be a little more electric than they might be with their buddies in the herd. But still, you from watching if you don't cut. By watching 
cattle being settled and predicting their behavior and having fun with it, you're going to be so much more clear or you're going to be able to make a better judgment right off the bat about a, how a cow even enters the arena. So, and, so, and most of the time we really only have a split second um, to, um, um, to make a decision about a cow um, in our, in our fence classes. And, and uh, this, this last show, uh, when I went into the pen, the cow came out of the, uh, the back gate and I was like, oh, I remember you from last night. I, I know about you. And that was kind of fun because, you know, of course he was fresh for the fence work, but he had been in the herd the night before and I already had a familiarity with him, um, which was really helpful. Um, but, you know, Barb, when I think about the top pick characteristics, you know, one of the things that I want to see in a cow um, is that they'll move. Look, when my horse approaches the cow, it will move. Or in the case of when the cows are being settled, as the settler's horse approaches that cow, the cow moves away. But when it moves away, it doesn't scatter. It doesn't act wild. It doesn't run to the back of the fence. It doesn't hide behind a, um, a buddy. That it moves away, but it's um, a respectful move. Like it's it's alert and it's responsive, but it's not wild. I also like to see a cow that's that's going to move at a steady gait. The you know sometimes you can get a small, really thin um, heifer that might be in there, and you know she's real. She and sometimes Corrientes will move those, even though we don't see a lot of those when when we compete. But, you know, they, they, they kind of jump around like rabbits, you know, they, they, a horse kind of bumps into them and they overreact to the horse and, you know, they run off a few feet and then they stop and then they run off again. I'd like to see a cow that will, um, if it's going to move away, it might take a couple of little small slow trot steps and then it walks and it turns and it looks. I especially want to see that cow have an interest in the horse. I'm always nervous about a cow that as you continue to walk up to it or the settler walks up to the cow, that it, it doesn't even acknowledge that the horse is there. And the reason why for me, I feel uncomfortable with that is because you never know with those cows, whether they're really going to be dull and they're not going to move or all of a sudden they wake up and they see you and then their mo movement is unpredictable. If they have an interest in the horse, I feel like they have some reverence for it and some respect for it. And I really like if, if a settler approaches a cow and the cow kind of just takes a couple steps back and, and says, oh, I see you, I'm not sure what to do. They don't run, but they honored the horse and, and moved away. I do also, though, like a, a cow that is okay standing alone. Um, the last thing that I want to do when I um, uh, cut a cow is have it so paired up with another cow that we can't get that cow separated. Um, so a cow in a herd environment that will be okay standing around by itself, um, uh, you know, maybe not totally distracted from the horse, but is okay just kind of standing alone and watching the horse. So when we, when we settle cows as cow watchers, we want to watch how the cow responds to the settling horse. Um, another important uh, consideration when uh, uh, predicting the behavior or the likely beha behavior of a cow is what they do with their head. Um, a, a cow, in my view, that hides from a settler's horse or from any horse. So sometimes a settling can be done, but a cutter goes in and they take up four or five cows. I'm gonna watch those four or five cows because I'll learn about the cows as they're coming up. But a cow that drops his head and hides or, or alternatively, a cow that goes around with its head up, those are cows that I wanna keep an eye on. And I'd rather see a cow that just carries its neck level it's at the base of its tail, its tail stays low. That, that to me um, signifies that the cow is reasonable. Like he's not scared, 
He's not dull. He's just traveling around at an, at an even um, level. And then, like I said a few minutes ago, that that if a settler's horse or a cutter's horse bumps into a cow in a, in a small herd, and probably best to just talk about a settler's horse, I'm okay if the cow kind of bumps off the settler's horse by trotting her stride or two, but I surely, I mean, I'm going to put a check mark next to that cow if it stops to a walk or slows to walk and turns and looks at the horse. That to me is like, okay, I'm going to watch this cow again, but that was a really good sign. He trotted, but then he stopped and he looked at my horse. And that was all behavior that I'd say, okay, this, this cow is ranking up in, in my pick for a possible cow for me to cut. Shannon, I don't know if, um, because it's about my short-term memory, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> if we mentioned, but you can never make a final judgment about a cow. I mean, not that you ever make a final, final judgment, but your best prediction until you see it by a horse. Yeah. And you're, when you're watching cattle, this is a really huge tip. When you're watching cattle, it would be easy to have your eyes all over the place. Like, where, where do you look? And um, your eyes should be around the, the cattle, around the settler's horse. Now, in, and I know you're going to talk about this in a second, Shannon, but in this case, um, the horse is not the settler's horse. That's actually one of the helper's horses. But you could still, you could watch if that horse, if that person was feeling like this white cow on the far left over here was hanging out here and needed to start to go back, you could watch how these cows reacted to the horse. But that is how you can tell because they, like if a cow's hanging out, like Shannon was talking about, I really love that, but I'm not going to give it my final check mark or my final, like, I think it's one of the best ones until I see it by a horse. Okay, go ahead, Shannon. Yeah, and how that, uh, how that relates to those of you who maybe don't cut, maybe you're interested, but you don't cut, and you do your, your fence classes, whether you're, you're boxing or box drive, box drive, or you're doing fence work, the first, what I will call bump, the first time you and your horse hit the bubble of that one cow in the arena when, when our great cattle, cattle crew released that cow to you, that's your first kind of first touch to that cow. And that's exactly what Barb is saying is that until that horse uh, and cow lock up or until that cow acknowledges the horse, we're not really sure what we have, right? So a cow could come out and it seems kind of dull and dazed, but as soon as you get into that cow's bubble, he starts to really move and then you get surprised. Or a cow that comes out and he seems kind of high headed and, and as soon as you bump into the cow with your horse, I don't mean literally bump in, I mean just barely touch the bubble and that cow stops and looks at you, then you're like, oh, you're, I shouldn't be afraid of you. But it, it, what Barb said is applies to, to our herd work, but it also applies to the first interaction between your horse and the cow when you hit that bubble. Yes. So um, Barb, uh, what I thought we'd do here is maybe let's go on uh, at this point, talk about some of the things that would make you scratch a, a cow off of your list. Okay, so it's really the, it's really the opposite of what we just said. So if a, if a really positive cow when they see the horse, to me, it's like about when they see a horse and how they respond. So if a really good cow moves away, maybe at a little medium and then they go slow, then a cow that we don't like moves quickly and, and sometimes like randomly and might just keep moving, heading to the back gate. Um, they often squirm and try to get away from the horse. They might carry their head extremely high or low. 
They just want to get away. And they're the ones you want to stay away from. So Shannon, if you'll go to the next picture, we could show some examples. Like my, my favorite example of what Shannon was talking about is this little black cow here on the left. That's a, you know, look at the level line of that cow's top line. Also, you can't really see it very well, but this guy, Settler is moving his horse pretty um, with some energy there. And this black cow, this second black cow, we can't see its head, even though its head is down, it's not squirming away. But look at these two cows. They are like getting out of dodge. I mean, they're just, um, they're going. And even these two cows, look how far away they are. And this yellow cow is pushing against the gray cow. So it's really the opposite of the good cow. Now, to me, we can't tell that much about this solid black cow down here because it's so far away from the action here. Um, I mean, at least just in this particular situation. Also, if these cattle here are facing away from the horse, you know, it's hard to know if they're really engaged um, it, with the horse or not, or even aware. But when they are facing the horse and they are close to the horse like this and their top line stays level and this, if this guy been backed up or, or if a horse is close to them to their hindquarters and they're leaping like these, uh, these two and this yellow cow over here on the right, that's not good behavior. So I'd have to give those guys an X. Yep, okay. agreed. Next. So the maybe cows, they just need to be watched longer before deciding maybe you haven't seen them by a horse. They sometimes they have more move. They're not quite as obvious as a really good cattle, but they're not wild. Um, and a maybe cow that evolves to a yes cow will become quieter and on our horse as they get more comfortable in the arena. Like sometimes cattle, when they first come in, it's a new environment and they, it, you know, it takes them a little bit to, to settle down. And you'll notice this as the riders show, watching cattle behind the horse as people show as well as how they walk back when they make cuts is huge about judging these maybe cattle. A maybe cow that evolves to a no cow will show increasing aggressive tendencies as riders show. Perhaps to get away more or even faster or hang on the back fence or push through other cattle. So um, the maybe cattle, you can tell as horses work when they are driven out and they go back again by other horses or behind the horse. The bad ones will get more pushy, go towards the back fence, bury their head, move faster, get away from the horse. The maybe cattle that are better might walk back and stop and look at the horse as they get more comfortable in the arena. So that's really fun about watching cattle. So Here's just some cattle again, another group. To me, this would be, you know, this is really hard to tell by one snapshot in time. We were concerned that if we showed a video, it would be hard for everybody to keep their eyes moving at, in the same place. But this cow right here, this cherry red cow, that kind of looks from that picture like a maybe cow, like it's not really wanting to look at the horse. It's moving away, but it doesn't look like it's jumping away. So it's really, really hard to tell. Whereas this little black cow behind the horse right here is super comfortable, very comfortable. And looking, looking at the horse, whereas the rest of the cows are looking away, like that little black cow, mm -hmm. I would wait till that horse turned around and then see how that cow responded to the horse coming towards it, but definitely a maybe cow. Okay, all right. So 
what we wanted you to do with your sheet of paper, you're going to have a great opportunity this Friday in Bryan to be able to practice your cattle reading skills, your cattle watching skills. And we thought we'd make it really simple. Now, sometimes when we cut, we might describe, you know, 20 cows in our herd, maybe more depending upon where our draw might be. But we'd like to challenge you to evaluate 10 cows in a herd. Hey, and by the way, this is a great game that you can play with friends. So I want to help you understand um, um, how to use these um, forms. So Marv, just for the sake of time here, um, I'm going to just walk through how to use the form. So step number one, do you see where it says cow description? Okay, step number one will be to describe uh, up to five cows within one color. Look at the very top left-hand corner of, of one of your blocks. And it says, what's the color? Well, in this particular herd, I put that the color was red. So any cows I would see on this page would all be red. So that helps me. So in your four blocks, you could technically, uh, four blocks in your sheet of paper, you could have four different colors of cows. In this example, these are red. Then what I'm gonna do is to write the description in language that I understand using kind of the formula that we talked about, which is um, the face, um, any particular um, um, characteristics on the face that I can remember. I already know it's red. Um, and then I might add anything else that I see. So this first one that I, I described is this cow right here. This is the, we know it's a red cow, so it is the red mott has what I would call a right eyebrow. This is language that I like to use. And I ha it has a little headband here and a little bit of white that goes across its head. And then if I thought that he was similar to another cow, like there maybe there was another mott similar to him, I might add one more element, like he's kind of chunky. Then I would describe the other two cows. So a mule nose cow, and this is a little brindle cow right here. And then there's a solid red um, with a little piece of hay on his on his uh, forehead. Shannon, I want to jump in here just a second. Yeah. One of the things that um, what happens a lot of times with these like red cattle and black cattle, there are variations of color. So that red mod that you just talked about with the eyebrow there. That might be the only, that's a pretty distinctive to me kind of mott look. So I don't need to get into the weeds with, you know, going into depth. But let's just say that that cow was solid, just like the cow behind it. To me, those are cherry red cattle, as opposed to the red cow on the left, which is more of a brownish, brindley kind of cow. It's hard to see for sure. But, you know, like you can do cherry red, medium red, orange to help you distinguish again if you need to. So, yeah, and, and it really is just whatever you feel like you need to describe so that you remember that cow. So, yes, Shannon, I just want to address um, one thing that a question, and I know that we're trying really hard not to keep everybody too late. But there's a question asked about um, watching cattle for say the youth or for rerun classes. And here's the thing, what we're talking about is really best done as a learning exercise for fresh cattle classes. And here's why. When cattle have never been into the arena, they don't know the game. They don't understand that you're going to separate one and then you're going to, you know, keep it separated and then it's going to go back. And by nature, they're herd animals. So they want to go back. Well, pretty soon after they've been worked with one group in a fresh cattle class and they come back into the arena, they know the game and they know that they get to rest or where their home quote unquote is, is on the back fence. So they get really a lot pushier and it's a, it's a lot of these rule, not rules, but 
things we've been talking about don't really apply to rerun cattle classes. So to do this exercise for the purpose of learning to read cattle, it's really best to go during the, like the open cutting classes. Or and what's row. great about the shot cutting, um, Barb, is that those are fresh cattle for all the bunches. Oh, wow. So for Friday night cutting with Stock Horse of Texas, those are fresh cattle for those bunches. So this will be a great, great way for the, everyone to, to uh, practice. Uh -huh. So cool. everyone, as you use this form, I'll go back to the red as an example, because I've written the cow's description. The next thing that I want to do is, is and, and I actually might pick a cow first, like, oh my gosh, I like that cow. I'm, I really like that. I put a little check mark right here at the top and then I describe it or I might describe the cows and then I have to decide, is this a cow I want or don't want or is this a maybe cow? And then I identify that. So you can see here on the left-hand side is a settling grade. So I'm gonna give a cow a grade before it gets worked. And I think that's a real important message. Hey, Shannon, I just wanna tell you, yeah. I don't know why anyone else, uh, why people would want to go to any cuttings besides shot if you have fresh cattle in every glass. That's right. Okay, That's sorry. Right. Just a little comment on the side. Yeah, exactly. So real important um, for this challenge, you're going to pick 10 cows using the form, but we want you to grade your cow during settling during that settling period and before the first horse enters the herd to begin that set. Now, you might change one of your grades before a cow gets worked after they've been settled because you kept watching that cow. Maybe it came to the top a few times and you, you had it down as a maybe, but boy, it didn't get cut, but it ran back to that herd so fast and then you change your question mark to an X and that's okay. But once it gets worked, that's when you're going to need to give yourself a final grade. Okay, so, oops. Go ahead, Barb. You can add that comment to the slide. Okay, well, okay, I'd rather, thank you, just for a sec. Okay. Here's one thing that's really important in terms of developing your skills. Once the competition begins, you really, that studying the cattle for deciding about the maybe cows, well, about any of them, as far as that goes. You know, like I always think of, okay, I've made these judgments while I've settled. Now, as people are working them, am I affirming my original decision or am I changing my mind? And so once the competition begins, um, if the cow gets worked, what you do is you have to say like how they really got worked, right? But if they haven't gotten worked, I, and you want to change it and you can do this game however you want the idea is for you to make start to make a commitment and see how your judgment matched how the cow really worked and again if like Shannon said if the cow never got worked and you thought it was a good cow or a maybe cow but you you were watching it because you're watching your 10 cows you want to know what they're doing then even though it didn't get worked, if it kept going like 90 miles an hour to the back fence, it probably didn't get worked for a reason. So that would be a bad cow or an X, no way. Okay. All right. So just as, just as uh, Barb said, um, this was my, my red cows, the three red cows. And as they worked, um, I picked uh, that Mott as a good cow, ended up being a good cow. And because I got a correct answer, a correct assessment is going to give me one point. Um, so if I said it was a top pick and it ended up being good, I'm going to get a point. If I said it was bad and it ended up being bad when, the, when another rider used the cow, 
I'm going to get a point because I knew he wasn't a good cow. And I'm like, yes, I was right. If um, I thought he was a maybe cow, like he piqued my interest, I wasn't quite sure. And he turned out to be a really good cow. I'm going to give myself credit for that too. Now, if the cow is a maybe and like maybe you thought he was going to be good and he turned out to not be good, he ran over the, the rider and their horse, um, I'm going to take a point away. And this is a, a wonderful way to just say, oh, I remember that cow. I thought he was good. He was. And pretty soon you'll be like, okay, you'll be really paying attention to how they behave. I mean, actually are worked. And I, I, can I just say one thing? Yeah. This is from the chat and you answered this and I just want to comment. The judge, there's a question about, does a judge care if you work a cow? Judge, the judges are not watching cattle. Judges care about your run. They don't care if you, if the same little gray cow gets worked five times, if it works great every time. What they care about is how your horse is presented, how you make your cuts, if you hold it, if the cow works in the middle of the arena, those kinds of things. So the judge is not judging the cattle. Okay. Yeah, that, that's real important because, you know, if a cow walks up and it was the second cow for a competitor and they kind of put their hand down and the bell goes off, the cow really never got worked, but you could call him a rerun. So always look to cut a good, a top pick fresh cow as your priority. And I know that a lot when we show a lot, and this is real important, so I want to share this with you. Um, at a lot of the ranch cuttings and on Friday night with Stock Horse of Texas, a lot of you cut for shape where you're looking for a cow that presents itself in a good position for you to take a hold of it and drive it up the pin. But what we're talking about here is really about um, predicting cattle and picking cattle that you believe that you and your horse can handle. And that's what this program is about tonight is to give you one more tool to help show your horse the best that you can and to help you be a better reader of cattle. So after you've picked your 10 cows in this cattle watching challenge and you've put those cows on your form, um, you're going to grade yourself and the ideal score would be a 10. If you can get 10 out of 10, uh, 10 correctly evaluated, you, you pat yourself on the back. Now, I, I don't know, I, if I were going to do this, I might play with a few friends um, because it's fun to talk about cows together. That's one of my favorite memories from when I was cutting is to have two or three folks just sitting there talking about cows as they were settling. And then we had all bet, oh, I think my mine's gonna mark the highest. I, I, here go, there goes my cow right now, he's gonna be great. That'd be something I'd recommend that you guys could do with your friends. But in this example right here, you could see this is a little different um, um, explanation of, of some cows, but I went ahead and scored these 10. And on my black cows, I was, uh, I got five points, rocked that. And then on the red cow, red cows, I was off one. I thought that little baldy with the horns, the little red baldy with the horns was gonna be a maybe cow. And he ended up not being a good cow at all. I ran the, ran the horse over. So I had to take a point away. So 90% of my picks were pretty good there. And Barb, what would you expect, you know, in all the years that you cut Barb, what should folks look for in terms of being able to judge cows? You know, like 60% accuracy, 50, 70, what do you think? Well, I was just gonna say, if you had 90% accuracy, I think you are on the genius scale. But <laughs> um, I think that, you know, nobody, I don't really care how long and how much experience you've had is 100% in predicting cattle with more experience you your percentage goes up i think the best cow watcher most most experienced um cutting people who who do this all the time you know as a oh, and non-pros and amateurs of course i think a really good percentage would be 90 percent. i think it's more like 
80, 85 is what happens because you just, you just never know. You don't ever know until a cow is cut what it's going to be like. It could be really wild. It could be, you, know, you think it's a good cow, but it's, it's what we call numb or dead. It's not really dead. It just doesn't move. It doesn't respond to the horse. So I think uh, 80, 85, 90 for sure is good. Most important thing is just for everyone, I think, uh, and for us to just remember that we are constantly learning. We are constantly evolving in our, in our thought process. We're constantly practice, practicing trial and error. The more cows you can see um, in herd work and watching fence runs, the more that you will start to build an intuition about what that what a particular cow will do. And then with that intuition and experience comes confidence. And there's nothing worse than feeling like you're a victim of a cow or that you're at the, you know, the, the whim of a cow. Um, but the more you get to know them, the more you practice this cattle watching challenge, I think the more confident that you will feel in your ability to read cattle without having a lot of cattle at home to work. So Barb, man, that was like the Cliff Notes version of cattle watching, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good, but um, I think everybody needs to make a comment in the, in the chat about it. And, um, you know, Shannon and I uh, last fall did this event and then we did it this spring we're going to do it again this fall and it's really about it's a we call it a cow intensive and we're going to add a lot of uh cow reading to it um this fall but um it's really all it's the only clinic that i do or have ever done that's really focused on cattle of course it's about working your horse too but it's really about cattle and understanding cattle and working cattle so um, anyway, hey, you bar. Here's the test for the, here's the test this week. So you're going to be there Friday, and I'm going to be there Friday. I can't wait to see how many of these cattle watching challenge worksheets are in folks' hands at the cutting. They're going to be in the chairs along the side. They're going to be making wagers between their friends. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, thank you guys for your um, comments in the chat. And yeah. a special thanks to Stock Horse of Texas for putting on this free event for um, everyone tonight. Um, just another representation of Stock Horse of Texas commitment to helping educate you all and creating a community of like-minded people. Uh -huh. We were ex really excited to um, play a part and thanks to everyone who kind of hung with us through a few glitches um, today. Not sure uh, why that happened, but we do appreciate it very much. And just to kind of also chime in there, um, we will be sending copies of your slides to everyone who registered. So watch your email. Um, it may take us a day or two, but we will get all that stuff sent out to you. So you'll have it in time for the show. Awesome. And um, thank you to Jill and Stock Horse of Texas for putting this all together. And thank you to Shannon. And thank you to all of you for being here. Have a great night, everybody. We appreciate you so much. All righty. And we'll see you on Friday. I'll be there on Friday. Sounds great. Bye, everybody.